Hey, this is Coach T. This is a new video series that I'm going to run maybe 10 or 12 videos on. And uh, the conversation kind of came out of helping a buddy who's designing a board game and also talking to my mom who is designing craft books and coloring books and all sorts of stuff. And they needed a software solution that's cost effective, is not a subscription model, and offers a lot of power and capability for designing a print-ready, professional-looking book. Now, I have experience with Affinity Publisher over the last two years. Um, I kind of have trailed them since they since Serif released Affinity Publisher 2. I, I bought it almost immediately after that because I helped develop and design some skirmish games, and I contributed to the layouts, and I did that with Affinity Publisher. Previously, I've used... Uh, Microsoft Publisher, I've used Microsoft Word, I've used Google Sheets, all sorts of different things for designing board games. And the tool that I keep coming back to that I like the absolute most, once I've got the ideas fleshed out, I've got the mechanics ready, I've got graphics and sketches and stuff like that, my absolute favorite document creator is Affinity Publisher 2. So I'm hoping that this will be useful to somebody who wants to design catalogs or brochures or handouts or maybe even other books. It's not the best software, though. I'll say this up front for creating something like a Kindle book, a .mobi, or a .epub. You're better off with something like Scrivener or uh, even Microsoft Word can do that. But if you've got images, if you've got graphics, if you've got unique or funky text layouts, or you want to have a lot of control over how every single page looks, this is the program for you, and it's also very cost-effective. Now, just as a heads up, I don't get any money from Serif. This is not a sponsorship deal or anything like that. I don't ask any money or anything like that from anybody who watches these videos. I just want you to be able to take away a new skill and to be able to do something cool with it. So if you like this kind of head first approach to doing, uh, I guess in, in this case, not software design and coding, but actually doing some graphic design, consider subscribing to the channel and dropping a like or a comment or a tip for another learner. I put these videos together for other adult learners like myself who like to make cool stuff. So, first thing, this is our home screen here on Affinity Publisher, and we know we're in Publisher because we have the orange icon highlight. Uh, first thing that you should notice, these other icons are the other software that uh, Serif makes through the Affinity Suite. So you've got Affinity Publisher, Affinity Designer Persona, which would flip me over to the Affinity Designer interface. I don't actually have the desktop version of Designer yet. I've waffled. I have it on my iPad. I don't use it that often because I often find that I can do whatever I need to do in photo. And you'll see if I click it right away, it switches over to the interface. So that's very useful if you are designing an image in photo, which is Affinity's version of Photoshop. It's great. Uh, and you want to come over into photo and use photo specific tools to edit that photo in some way or that image. And then you can pop right back over into Publisher and anything that you changed on that image in the photo persona will carry back over into Publisher. So there's great interactivity between those three software. Uh, and the nice thing about Affinity is it's a one-time purchase, no subscription plans, and they run sales pretty regularly, which is dope. So that is the very, very basics of our interface here. Uh, you're gonna wanna be familiar with these top bars, but we'll get into that as it becomes appropriate. Ignore this stuff over on the right for now. Ignore your toolbar over here on the left. And what I want you to do is to just to take a look at, a, at these master and pages. This is a concept that we need to get familiar with before we get any deeper into uh, designing a document. Before I pop this document open and create a new one, you need to understand that a master page is a template that you develop that can be applied to all of the pages. And I will demonstrate what this means probably in the next video. Uh, but the master pages, you can have as many of these templates and layouts as you want. And then what that does is it allows you to save time on rearranging the same looking pages over and over again, the way that you might in Google Sheets or uh, Google, Google Docs or in Microsoft Word or even in Microsoft Publisher where they have master pages, but it's not perfect. Uh, the pages implementation and the master pages implementation in Affinity is downright pleasant to work with. So we're going to look at these master pages. I'll give you an idea of what they look like in the next video. And we're going to look at pages as well. But for now, the purpose of this video, trying to keep it less than eight minutes, is just to create a new document. So you're going to want to go up here to file and create a new, you could do a new book, but don't worry about that for now. You could do a last preset. Don't worry about that for now. Just go to new. 
and we get this slightly overwhelming overlay here. And the big salient parts are we could open a document if we had something like that. We could open our recent documents. We could look at our templates if we've saved them. And there are even some samples if you want to see how other people put these images together or these documents together. We're not going to do that though. We are just going to open up a new document and you have tons of paper options. Some are press ready, some are print ready. The difference there is commercial press versus a printer. You have photo options. Uh, R is like 4K, I believe. And then web. Notice that these have preset pixels, so it has an idea of what it is that you want, like a YouTube thumbnail. This is a custom one that I created. And I see I've got this backwards. That's frustrating. That's my bad. You've got some device ones. If you know you're creating a logo for like an Apple Watch or something like that, I don't know why you'd be doing that, but if you were, there it is. And then we've got some architectural. I actually have no idea what that means. So what we're going to do is uh, we are going to actually create our own version of, let's see, we'll do, let's pretend that we're going to create a magazine that's eight and a half by 11, but I don't want to, I want to have a custom because I know I'm going to be doing this every month, for example. So I'm going to take my mouse. I'm going to come down here to create a preset. I'm going to call this magazine layout. It's print. This is the icon so I can find it. None of that really matters. And then we're going to come over here to the center overlay and I'm looking at page width, but really what I want is inches. I want 8.5 by 11 inches, eight and a half by 11. My DPI is important because I'm going to make this magazine for a print. So I want a minimum of 300 image. Uh, image placement, when you embed an image, it means that uh, the image is then, the software will duplicate the image that you want to place in there. And if you were to change the original, it won't affect the one that's in your document. That's better than if you link it. Because if you link it and you delete it or you move something, it gets lost. It can't find that link. It can lead to some issues. So for now, prefer embedded unless you know exactly what you're doing. You're not going to be moving your file hierarchy or you're not or, or you know that you are going to be updating images. So maybe you would want to have linked just so that the, the software will push the new image right in. So we're just going to do prefer embedded. It's easier for pages. We can have facing pages. For color options, uh, we've got a whole bunch of, of different options here. So RGB 8, 16, 32 is high definition resolution. We've got eight uh, grayscale by eight, grayscale by 16. We also have CMYK, which is not something that Microsoft Publisher can output. And when you pick CMYK, you actually get a bunch of different presets for different printers. So if you're planning to output uh, something like this to Lulu or to uh, Kindle or uh, Kindle Direct Platform, KDP, uh, or even to what I use, which is uh, drive through RPG and the Lightning printers, you can actually install the specific printer's color profile, which will help make sure that what you're seeing on the screen is one-to-one -one communicable to the printer. For now, we're just going to leave this as RGB8. That keeps it nice and small, the file size. So we are pretty much ready other than margins and bleed. And the margins and bleed here, it's pretty simple. I have these chained for now for linking. I want to have a margin of, let's say, 0.5. And if I have these chained right now, they're linked, they're all on. But I am aware this is a two-page book, so I want to have a slightly larger inner margin. I'm going to do one inch. And that is represented up here by this blue line. So now I know if I'm doing true binding or I'm doing spiral binding, something like that, it's, this is not going to run a risk of getting lost or too tight for the reader to see. And I've also got bleed. And we always want to have a bleed of a minimum 1.25. That does depend on the printer, though, your service. Bleed means that the image would come over the edge so that when the printer cuts along the long and short axes of the page, there's little to no risk of white space or white paper being uh, exposed 
because your image is printed outside the very edge of what will be the physical edge of the page. So it's important to understand that bleed makes sure that you don't have unnecessary white lines on your paper. It just makes the whole thing look cleaner. If you have a white page, it's a little bit less of a concern, but most printers do require you to incorporate bleed. And you do that here at the time of document setup. So we're going to create. And right away, I can see I've got one page and I've got my two page master spread, which we'll come back to in the next video. And uh, before I end this one, if there are ever any concerns like, oh, I realized I set this up wrong, I can just come up here to the document setup button. Click that sucker and here's that middle pane again. I can see everything that I need just in case. So it's not a one and done. You can always come back and adjust things if you, if you want. You could even affect only selected masters or selected spreads. Like let's say I realized on some masters I need a bigger margin. I could come in here and do that, but that's really not germane to this setup video. So there you go. That's how we set up our very first document in uh, Affinity Publisher 2. Hopefully that was straightforward and useful and it gets you on your feet so that you can start creating cool documents. If you like this kind of video, consider subscribing. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.